Hello, and welcome to read us a story. What shall we read today? How about A Hero Called Wolf by Lucy Rowland and Ben Mantle. A Hero Called Wolf There once was a wolf who was mean and quite hard who turned things around with a, a library card. He'd made some new friends, and he'd learnt how to share, and he now took a satchel of books everywhere. But one day the wolf, looking sullen and glum, slumped into the library and sucked at his thumb. There, there, Mrs Jones said. She asked him, what's wrong? As Wolf began howling, oh, I just don't belong. In all of these stories, I'm always the crook. Can't a wolf be a hero, the star of a book? Mrs. Jones pondered, then nodded her head. So right one, the clever librarian said. A pen and some paper, that's all you'll need. You could write the story that you want to read. Could I be a hero? The wolf thought to himself. He looked round the library and searched through a shelf. Those heroes are handsome. They're tough and they're strong. I can't be a hero. I might get it wrong. With that came a knock and a swing of the door. The woodcutter! Wolf knew this hero for sure. I've got a big problem, the wolf woodcutter said. He flexed his strong muscles high over his head. My axe isn't working. It won't cut my wood. I might need a new one. Oh, this isn't good. But then wolf remembered a rather good book called All About Axes. He said, mm, take a look. The woodcutter thanked him and started to read, while outside a knight had arrived on her steed. This hero was shiny. She looked rather tough. She rushed through the door in a bit of a huff. Well, someone has stolen my feed bag, of course, and now I can't use it to feed my poor horse. But Wolf could remember a farm book he'd read and said to the knight, Use my satchel instead. The knight thanked the wolf. She'd just started to read when in rushed a prince, and he ran at such speed. A fast, handsome hero with long, flowing hair. He sulked to the other. This doesn't seem fair. I've got a grand ball tonight. Oh, look at that. Someone has ruined my best feather hat. Just then, wolf remembered a craft book he'd read. They made a long feather from paper instead. Oh, thank you, the prince cried. My hero, he said. Then Wolf grinned a grin, and he scratched at his head. A hero, Wolf whispered. He turned rather pink. Yes, maybe, he said, as he started to think. But suddenly, boom! Such a thunderous sound. The shelves shook and tremored. Books fell to the ground. There came a loud fee, a loud fi, boo, and foam. Outside, Mrs. Jones yelled, the giant has come. Stand back cried the woodcutter, axe in the air. Away! shrieked the prince with a flick of his hair. And charge! yelled the knight. Now you leave us no choice! But stop! called the wolf in a deafening voice. For heroes are brave, and they're clever and kind. Wolf took a deep breath, so he'd not change his mind. Then he turned to the giant, his voice a small yelp, and said, uh, Hello! Welcome! And how may I help? 
The giant was shocked, and he gave Wolf a look, then told him, Uh, the thing is, I, uh, need a new book. I've read all my books, and I'm ever so old. I've heard all the tales that have ever been told. Not this tale, the wolf grinned. He picked up a pen as Mrs. Jules gave him some paper again. Sit down, the wolf said, on the soft forest floor. I'll tell you a story you've not heard before. See, heroes are clever, they're kind, and they're brave. Are heroes defined by the way they behave? Then suddenly Wolf knew he'd got it all wrong. They're not always handsome, or tough, or strong. The woodcutter, Prince, and the shiny knight, too, sat down with the giant, while Wolf thought it through. He wrote, Hero Wolf, at the top of his sheet, and there, on his face, spread a smile so sweet. A hero at last. It was rather exciting. He took a deep breath, and then Wolf began writing. And that was A Hero Called Wolf by Lucy Rowland and Ben Mantle. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, be sure and like the video. And remember, you can always subscribe to the channel at Read Us A Story. Thanks. Bye! Hello and welcome to Read Us A Story. What shall we read today? How about Hansel and Gretel by Bethan Wolven. Hansel and Gretel. Deep in the forest lived a witch named Willow. Willow wasn't like most witches. She was a good witch who only used good magic. Willow had even made herself a home entirely out of gingerbread. One day, while out in the forest, Willow spotted a trail of breadcrumbs, which she decided to follow. At the end of the trail, she found two children. We're Hansel and Gretel. What do you want? demanded the children. I'm worried these breadcrumbs might lead birds and mice to my gingerbread home, said Willow. Please, could you help me clean them up? Hansel and Gretel didn't like this idea, so they left Willow to tidy up on her own. But Willow did not get angry, because Willow was a good witch. When she arrived home, Willow couldn't believe her eyes. Hansel, Gretel, please don't eat my house, Willow cried. But it's so tasty, <laughs> Gretel said with a mouthful of gingerbread. Hansel and Gretel must be very hungry, Willow thought to herself. So she invited them in for dinner. While Hansel and Gretel made themselves at home, Willow used her best and most delicious spells to cook up a feast for them all. Unluckily for Willow, when she got to the table, she found that Hansel and Gretel had already gobbled up all of the food. But Willow did not get angry, because Willow was a good witch. It wasn't long before Willow had more to worry about than her rumbling tummy. Hansel and Gretel had found Willow's spells and wands and began to play with them. Please be careful with my magic things, Willow cried. But Hansel and Gretel still would not listen. The magic grew and grew and grew. Wanting the house all to themselves, 
Hansel and Gretel agreed to get rid of Willow. Gretel pushed the witch into the oven, and the naughty twins carried on filling her home with spells. Until it was bursting with magic. It wasn't long before Willow's home collapsed. It was only made out of gingerbread, after all. But this time, Willow did get angry. Because Willow was not always a good witch. <laughs> And that was Hansel and Gretel by Bethan Wolven. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, be sure and like the video. And remember, you can always subscribe to the channel and read us a story. Thanks. Bye! Hello, and welcome to Read Us a Story. What shall we read today? How about Little Red Reading Hood by Lucy Rowland? and Ben Mantle. Little Red Reading Hood Little Red Reading Hood loved reading books, always curled up inside crannies and nooks. She read in the bathroom, she read on the porch, she read late at night by the light of a torch. Flicking through pages, her little head bowed, Dreaming up stories and laughing out loud. But one day her mother said, What a to-do! Red, this old library book's long overdue. You must take it back to the library today. But listen, I've something important to say. Don't ever stray from the path in the wood. Yes, Mum, said Red, and she pulled up her hood. As Red skipped along, it was lovely and sunny, but suddenly Red felt a little bit funny. A wolf jumped in front of her. Gruffly, he said, Where are you taking that book, little Red? The library, she answered, to hand it back in. Oh, said the wolf, and he started to grin. The wolf licked his lips, and he had a good hunch that Little Red Reading Hood might do for lunch. He thought, she looks tasty, a flavoursome treat, and maybe I'll read her book after I eat. The wolf had a plan, so he said with a smile, but why don't you stay here and read for a while? <laughs> Red was quite tempted. Her book was so good. So she strayed from the path, and she sat in the wood. Ten minutes, she said, and she started to read, and off ran the wolf at lightning-fast speed. Now, books have all sorts of strange, magical powers, and that afternoon Red was reading for hours. Meanwhile, at the library... What a barbarian! Wolf had tied up Mrs. Jones, the librarian! He put on her glasses, her colourful smock, and said to himself, Red is in for a shock. A few moments later, Red opened the door. Come in, said the wolf with a wave of his paw. Little Red Reading Hood put her book down and looked at the wolf with a bit of a frown. Are you quite well, Mrs. Jones? she inquired. You look a bit different today. Are you tired? Red gasped. What big eyes? And then Wolf, with a sneer, said, Yes, all the better for reading, my dear. Red said, Your ears are hairy as well. And what? asked young Red. Is that terrible smell? The wolf ripped his smock off and sprang from his seat. Enough, cried the wolf. Now I'm ready to eat. You can't eat her up, the librarian blubbered. With a loud heave, she flew out of the cupboard. 
That's just such an obvious ending, she sighed. Oh, we've heard it before. You at least could have tried. The wolf eats the girl up. Well, that's nothing new. What? The puzzled wolf. But that's what wolves do. Wolves are the bad guy. It says in my book. Little Red Reading Hood gave him a look. She sat by the wolf and, despite her unease, said, Stories can end any way that you please. You don't like an ending? Red Reading Hood said. Then change it, arrange it again in your head. Just switch it and stitch it up some other way. The wolf nodded slowly and whispered, OK. A beanstalk grew up from the crack in the floor. Come on, Snow White shouted. It's time to explore. Peter Pan noticed the fairy dust settle. And now you can fly, he told Hansel and Gretel. So, back in her castle, deep under the sea, the mermaid invited the wolf round for tea. Aladdin jumped back and he gave a loud shout as his old fairy godmother tumbled right out. Hmm. He thought for a moment, hmm, a book of my own. And this time the wolf went to end up all alone. He picked up a book about shoemaking elves, then started to chuckle and search through the shelves. I found it, he shouted, and danced a few jigs, then borrowed a book about three little pigs. Little Red Reading Hood walked through the wood, the moon shining down on her little red hood. She curled up that night with a book in her hands and dreamt of huge dragons and magical lands. For whilst leaving footprints, sh footpaths should never be done. Straying from stories is all sorts of fun. And that was Little Red Reading Hood by Lucy Rowland and Ben Mantle. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, be sure and like the video. And remember, you can always subscribe to the channel at Read Us A Story. Thanks. Bye! Hello, and welcome to Read Us A Story. What shall we read today? How about Pinocchio? Illustrated by Giuseppe de Lernia. There once was a poor and lonely toy maker called Geppetto. One day he finished carving a wooden puppet. I'll call you Pinocchio, he said excitedly. You'll be just like a real boy and I'll be your papa. To Geppetto's surprise, the little puppet jumped up. He poked out his tongue and ran away laughing. Pinocchio suddenly noticed a small green cricket watching him. You're a naughty puppet. You must learn to be good, chirped the cricket. Pinocchio felt guilty. He ran straight back home to Geppetto. I'll be good and go to school, just like a real boy, he promised. Geppetto was happy to see his little puppet. He even sold his only coat to buy Pinocchio a book for school. The next day, Pinocchio forgot all about his promise to Geppetto when he spotted a new puppet show on his way to school. Nosy Pinocchio crept in to watch. The performers noticed the little wooden puppet straight away. Join us! they called out. Pinocchio jumped up on stage. He danced and sang with the other puppets until the end of the very last song. They even rewarded him with five gold coins. Geppetto skipped away, clutching his shiny gold coins. Perhaps I should buy Geppetto a new coat, he thought. All of a sudden, a fox and a cat appeared beside him. Give us your coins, and we will return with even more, they told Pinocchio. Don't trust those who promise to make you rich, whispered a familiar voice. It was the little green cricket. Pinocchio didn't know what to do. The longer he took to decide, the angrier the fox and cat became. 
Suddenly, the sneaky cat stuck out his paw and tried to snatch Pinocchio's coins. Pinocchio ran to a tree and climbed as high as he could. Try as they might, the fox and cat couldn't reach him or his gold coins. They grew tired of waiting and left. But poor Pinocchio was stuck in the tree. Pinocchio wished he had gone to school like a good boy. A magical blue fairy appeared and helped him down from the tree. She led him to her cosy cottage, where he told her all about the fox and the cat. Where are your coins now? asked the fairy. I, 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 I lost them, lied Pinocchio. He didn't want the fairy to steal his coins. But suddenly, his wooden nose started to grow His nose grew and grew and grew. It grew so long that a magic woodpecker had to peck it back down to its usual size. Your nose grows when you lie. Only naughty children lie, warned the blue fairy. The blue fairy decided to forgive Pinocchio for lying. If you become good and honest, I will grant you your greatest wish, she said. Pinocchio wanted nothing more than to become a real boy. He was determined to be good. But... As Pinocchio cycled home, he came across a secret place filled with children. It was the land of toys. Stay here with us, cried the children. And Pinocchio quickly forgot all about his promise. The cricket watched as for weeks Pinocchio stayed up late playing games with the children. Until one day, Pinocchio's ears started to grow long and furry. He was slowly turning into a donkey. It's because you've been naughty, Pinocchio, said the cricket. When you didn't come home, Geppetto tried to find you. And now he's lost at sea. Pinocchio had been so busy having fun that he'd forgotten all about Geppetto. He ran straight into the sea. I'll find you, Papa, he cried. As Pinocchio swam and swam, he didn't notice his ears had turned back into wood. Suddenly, a huge wave swept him into the open jaws of an enormous shark. <gasps> now he'd never find Geppetto. Pinocchio looked around in despair, but then he noticed a familiar figure who had also been swept into the shark's mouth. Papa! he cried out with happiness. As the shark opened its mouth, Pinocchio grabbed Geppetto's hand, jumped into the sea and swam as quickly as he could, paddling fast on his little wooden legs. I promise to take better care of you, Papa. Pinocchio said when they reached the shore. Geppetto quickly forgave his son and the two returned home. Pinocchio kept his promise this time. He worked hard at school, did his chores and took good care of his father. One morning he woke up and got ready for school as usual. He looked in the mirror and... <gasps> Papa! Papa! he cried out in surprise. I'm a real Boy! And Pinocchio was quite possibly the happiest boy in the world. And that was Pinocchio. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, be sure and like the video. And remember, you can always subscribe to the channel at Read Us a Story. Thanks! Bye! Hello, and welcome to Read Us a Story. What shall we read today? How about Rapunzel by Bethan Wolven? Rapunzel. Rapunzel lived all alone in a tall, dark tower. She was trapped there by a witch who visited every day. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair, called the witch.
and then, using Rapunzel's hair as a rope, up she climbed, because that was the only way into the tower. Every day, the witch brushed Rapunzel's hair, swish, swish, then, snip, snip, she stole some golden locks to sell for riches. As she left with her treasure, the witch cackled, Ah! <laughs> you can never escape, Rapunzel. Leave the tower and I will put a terrible curse on you. But was Rapunzel frightened? Oh no, not she. If the witch could use her hair to get in, Rapunzel could use it to get out. So one day, she did. After climbing down from the tower, Rapunzel pulled her hair free and looked around. Then she started to explore. The thought of returning to the tower made her sad. It's a shame about that witch, she thought to herself. So Rapunzel made a plan. She worked on it secretly every day. And with the help of a new friend she had made from the forest, she was always safely back in the tower before the witch came. The witch never suspected a thing. Until one day. Rapunzel! The witch found a leaf in Rapunzel's hair. But was Rapunzel frightened? Oh no, not she. The wind must have blown it in through the window, she said boldly. Well, remember, snarled the witch, if you ever leave the tower, I will put a terrible curse on you. And with that, she grabbed the end of Rapunzel's hair and climbed out the window. But the witch didn't get far before, snip, snip, she was sent tumbling to the ground. The witch's cursing days were done, so Rapunzel climbed out of the tower for the last time, down into the forest where her friend was waiting. And were the other witches frightened? Oh yes, indeed. And that was Rapunzel by Bethan Woolven. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, be sure and like the video. And remember, you can always subscribe to the channel at Read Us A Story. Thanks. Bye.